or hurt. Shout out to UFC Santa Clarita. We're working out today. Shout out to Baller Vision. Stay tuned for Day in the Life. Come soon. Make it, stay here till you make it, stay there till you make it, stay there till you make it. We're going back, touch the wall, okay? Person throws the ball here, okay? So we'll play great from half court all the way to a layup. where it's made listen you can't do damage with people in the seats if you can't do damage here what I mean my damage is blood sweat tears right now we're 40 minutes into a workout here at UFC Santa Clarita and I'm burnt out I got no energy I got nothing I got no no battery no stamina no dignity just trying to get it in let's finish strong shout out to Baller Vision I'll leave the line. So amateur. Fatigue will make you do amateur things. That's what fatigue does. We get on our crossing. That's why we're going to the gym after this. So I'm originally from Kaiser, Oregon. Um, I started playing basketball at two years old. Dad put the basketball in my hands. From Larry Bird hoop, it was like six feet tall. <laughs> Messing around, entertaining my family, making baskets on that. All the way to following my dad around the city, going to his city league games. He had a passion for the game. It just slowly started to wear off on me. And then he even coached me through middle school. Played high school, every level. But yeah, originally, you know, all in Kaiser, Oregon at two years old. Started playing the game. By about fifth grade, I knew that I was actually in love with the game of basketball. And I was invested at that point really heavily. So I was trying to make the NBA from, <laughs> from very young. 
but I would say from a professional standpoint, you know, I started playing on the M1 Mixtape Tour when I was 18 years old. And really, I went up, you know, initially, initially when I went up to try out uh, to play against the M1 team, I was just trying out for that one night. It wasn't something that I foresaw as a career. So the fact that they wanted me to come on tour with them was like an incredible bonus. And I was more than hyped because that was sort of a dream come true within itself. But going through that whole summer in 2003, you know, winning a nationwide contest on ESPN uh, to be signed to and won the company and be on the N1 mixtape team, that was even more of a dream come true. And that's when I realized like, okay, this potentially is my career. Signing with N1 in August of 2003 was definitely one of the best experiences of my life and kind of uh, paved the way for my professional career. The Spider-Man basketball series doing as well as it did definitely came as a surprise. You know, initially my friend <laughs> Robert Monroe and I, we were trying to come up with a concept that could go viral uh, for YouTube to try to take the view count to another level because I had decent viewership on my videos at that point, um, but I didn't have a lot of videos that were in the millions. So he was really up on cosplay and the sort of like Comic-Con world and and that whole thing. And I didn't know much about it at the time, to be honest. But his thought was like, hey, how do we combine that with basketball and make it cool and funny? And then from there, we kind of decided to do the Spider-Man suit because it covers every part of the body. And it could be like prank style because you wouldn't actually know who was in the Spider-Man suit playing ball if you saw the video. So that was the idea, just to go do a prank, have some fun. We filmed it one afternoon and <clears throat> By the time we got back, it was later in the evening. Uh, I edited it real fast, threw it up, and it actually didn't even fully upload by the time I woke up in the morning. But the, here's the thing, I had to catch a flight to Chicago. So I just left it uploading, left the computer on. By the time I actually got to LAX, it already had like 300,000 views. And then by the time I actually landed in Chicago, it had 3 million views the first day. And then I think by the end of the week, it was like 7 million. And, just kind of went from there, but then, you know, being that that happened, people were waiting on a part two. So instead of parlaying it as just Spider-Man playing basketball every time, we thought it would be cool to do something a little innovative and to make it sort of a video comic book where obviously Spider-Man doesn't fight, but plays basketball instead. And then there's sort of like a story around it. So I think, I think that was a great choice um, on Rob's part in making it something that generated interest long-term as opposed to just playing basketball every time. But it definitely came as a surprise. It was definitely a blessing because then it took my digital platform to a whole new level, which is now obviously a full-time business. And uh, it's been great, it's a blessing. So with what I do now, YouTube is a full-time business. And basically what we do is we cover all the events I do year round. Um, so that's just a part of it. And a lot of people, they'll approach me on the street and they'll be like, so you just hoop for a living? Like, that's incredible. And I'll say, you know what, it is incredible and it's definitely a blessing, but that doesn't mean there's no grind that goes along with it. Yeah, so, so far today, took care of a little business at the, at the office early on. Then I called my cousin um, to get a hoop cardio workout in. A lot of time when I'm working out in the gym, it'll be with my cousin and we, we try to utilize uh, cardio as big, you know what I mean? When, I, when I'm off the court, we're working on core strengthening where I'm on the court, it's heavy cardio stuff. Um, primarily, my, my whole thing is focused on handles, so I'm trying to do that while I'm tired. So if we hit the game, you know, fourth quarter comes around, we're still ready to go. Um, but later on tonight, uh, we're gonna get a uh, functional movement workout in. So when I work out off the court, uh, it tends to be more core-based. So it's, it's basketball-relatable movements. Um, working an area of the body, but also hitting the core with every single exercise. So, I love it, but uh, yeah, we'll do that later on. <laughs> Rock these shoes in uh, middle school, when I was like seventh grade or something like that. I, was, I liked these a lot back in the day, and funny enough, the, the playing style shoe was different back then. You know, like now, with Nikes, it makes such good performance footwear because it's super light, but it's also very sturdy. Back then, like, this is heavy. Like, for current day, if I was gonna go hoop in this, I would feel like I got some heavy shoes on. Back then, I didn't even think about that. Like, it was nothing. It was just like, it looked good, had good traction, 
it was whatever. Now I feel like this will weigh me down. It came out when I was like a senior in high school, I remember. A couple of my teammates had them. To me, this was, these were a little bit clunky though. It's like a big man shoe, funny enough. How you doing, man? Hey, good. How's it going, man? How you doing, man? Are you with me, dude? Yeah. Oh, okay. Pleasure to meet you. What's your name? This is Andre right here. Hey, what's up, buddy? Hi. This is the professor. How you doing? Say hi. This is the video I was showing you, remember? Remember when you played at the bas by the beach up in Newport? Yeah. It's good to meet you, good man. Fan, man. Nice hey, you. what's your name? It's Amelia. Amelia? Can I have a handshake? <laughs> Look, she's like, nah. <laughs> Wait, we get a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Come here, guys. We're going to take a picture. We're gonna leave it up. Promo. Leave it play. I guess we'll find out when you forget where you parked. <laughs> then you go look and you get lost. <clears throat> oh yeah, world. You guys want the best training you can't just be doing bodybuilding stuff you have to do sports performance training you have to go follow sacrifice on instagram s-a-c-r-i-f-i-t number one we focus on conditioning that's the most important because if you can go 100 percent in the fourth quarter and able to shoot free throws that's what is that's what's most important number two is we focus on core strength and leg strength that's what helps you move that's what helps you squat this is the athletic position right we're using our legs and our core our arms it's not necessary, all right? We're moving left and right, right? We're keeping low. We need to keep our legs nice and strong to stay in this position all game. If you start slacking off playing like this or playing defense, standing tall, you won't last, okay? You have to stay low the entire game. So we focus on leg, core strength. It'll take over. It will uh, infect, affect your game directly. Stay tuned.